Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Today we are talking about MyNet, what MyNet is, what we can do for you. Um, so, um, I'm Christine Nielsen. And I am Orvi Dingwall. Okay, and we are your presenters today. So, uh, before we really jump in, we like to kind of have a little bit of a, uh, a chance at the beginning to make sure everybody's good with to webinar. So if you have at some point lost your uh, menu, the big rectangular menu, uh, you can click on this nifty little icon at, in the ribbon at the bottom of your screen and it should bring it back up. Now um, if you ever need to, um, you can click on this nifty little arrow and you should be able to do it back the other way as well. We've got um, a space where you can ask questions. Um, so if you ever have questions as we're going along, um, or if you want to wait till the end, that's fine too. You can ask questions. We'll keep an eye on those. Um, and all you got to do is enter where it says enter a question for staff, and then click on receive it. Okay. All right. So test time. Uh, were you able to locate the question box? We'll give you a couple minutes to, to answer. Okay, I know the poll isn't closed, but I see um, a couple of people weren't able to find the questions box. So just a quick reminder, you wanna look for that um, sort of blue flower icon, click on that and it'll open your sort of um, your question box. It looks just like this and then you can click on questions. Yeah, and actually um, if you if you want to enter, it's a little tricky. It looks like you click up here, but you actually click underneath if you want to enter your question. Um, so that's that's a little weird, but it's what we're working with. So hopefully that that'll be uh, easy enough for everyone to figure out. Okay. All right. So let's, let's keep going here. We've got a really short list of objectives today. Um, basically at the end of the session, you should know about what mine is. Um, and also uh, know that up to date is available uh, for use as well. Okay. So um, we are going to post this recording afterwards. We post all of our, our webinars um, and we also send out an email afterwards too, um, just to make sure that we touch base, you know, give you the slides in case you want to refer back to them. Um, and then we ask for your feedback as well. So you can watch for that. All right. So MyNet um, is a spectacular acronym. <laughs> Manitoba's Health Information and Knowledge Network. Um, and it's run out of the University of Manitoba Health Sciences Libraries. And uh, any staff member at Manitoba Health, um, fee-for-service physicians in the province, and then uh, if you are working at a particular regional health authority, namely the ones on the screen here, um, you're all entitled to access um, the MyNet Library service. If you are joining us from uh, the WRHA, as an example, they have their own separate library service. Um, but everyone's always welcome at the webinars. So um, yeah, you have all kinds of, of information coming your way. So. As far as who we are, uh, Orvi and I already introduced our, um, Orvi is primarily the, the contact for folks out in the regions. Um, I'm primarily the contact for folks at Manitoba Health Seniors at Active Living. Uh, but we have two other folks on our team as well. We've got Gail, uh, who was our third librarian, and we have uh, Cheryl, who if you um, ever send an email to the, the general um, MyNet address. That's that's who you're talking to there. She's she's the wizard that tracks down all the good stuff um, when you put in requests. Okay. Um, if you don't have a, a library card, we do encourage you to get one because um, they are available at no cost to you. 
right? So um, all of all of the, the services offered through MyNet are uh, funded through the province. Um, so there there's no uh, fees involved, which is always really nice. Um, we encourage you to get a card uh, early on rather than waiting uh, until there's a, a, a like a, t a time constraint uh, for, for a need. So um, for example, if you are um, working on something and there's a bunch of articles that you need and you don't have a card yet, um, we'd, we'd need you to fill out the, the form for the card first. And so um, just to speed things up, we always recommend that um, people register as a borrower just when, when the pressure's off, right? Okay, so we have, on our website, we have the form, so we have our link here. Um, it's it's also pretty easy to get to if you just go to www.mynet.ca. Um, but we can also talk to you through email, and there's the fax number as well. Okay. So why why do you need Mynet um, when there's the great big wide world of Google? <laughs> <laughs> out there for you. Um, well, for one thing, not everything on the internet is free. Um, and for another, um, pretty much anybody can put up pretty much anything they want to. So um, the resources that we use are uh, ones that are, are a bit more vetted. So we got like your, your peer reviewed journals, databases, that kind of thing. Um, so hence, hence the cartoon about um, oh, it doesn't actually have the caption, Orby. Uh, no, the, the caption should read something to the effect of the beauty of the internet is that nobody knows you're a dog. Oh, <laughs> I think that's just your view, Christine, because I, oh. I can see that. Yeah. You can see it? Oh, yeah. okay. Well. So on oh. the internet, nobody knows you're a dog, and we're here to help you uh, distinguish between who are the dogs and who are these <laughs> peer reviewed <laughs> expert papers. There you go. Okay. So um, I keep alluding to all these these mystery services, and we we have uh, about five. Um, so we're going to talk about each of them uh, in turn. Um, we've got literature searches, what we call document delivery in the library lingo, current awareness, education training, like today, and then up to date as well. Okay. So literature searches. Quick question. We've got to make this as interactive and interesting as we can. Uh, have you ever requested a literature search for MyNet? Um, we'll just take a, a couple minutes and see if anybody has used the service. And we're asking these questions um, partly just to uh, understand better who you are and how much um, is relevant to us for us to provide. And mm -hmm. also, um, also, so you don't totally fall asleep and ignore us. <laughs> it is a warm day. All right. So it looks like everybody has voted, and there is a mix. So that's that's real interesting. Although the no's have it, most people haven't. Um, so basically, the the deal with a literature search is you can either email or you can fill out the online form that's on our website. I've got the URL here. Um, and this is whenever you you have an information need. So um, maybe you, there's something that you've encountered in your practice and you wanna see what you know the literature says. Um, maybe you are working um, on a committee with a new organization, you're updating a guideline or something. Um, or maybe you're, you're just curious about, about uh, a particular topic. So you would contact us and say, I would like to know more about topic X, um, and then you know give us a sense of what level of detail you need to go into. Like, are we talking, I, I just wanna see one or two things. Do you want everything that's ever been published? Um, things, things like that. And, and the form kind of helps walk you through it. And we can always kind of uh, follow up with questions afterwards. So um, either Orvi or myself or Gail um, would do the search for you on your behalf. So we'd look um, in, uh, as, as appropriate, we would look in databases like Medline or CINAHL or um, things like that. Or if you're looking for something different, like if you're looking for maybe 
um, government reports or something like that, we could take a look that way as well. Um, and then we would present you with um, a list of potential options. So like if you said I wanted like 25 articles, we might go like a little bit over 25 just so you can kind of see what's out there. But she's like, okay, here are some things, here are the abstracts. And then from there you can decide uh, what you want to follow up on, right? And you might too say to us, hey, we've um, I've searched in, on PubMed and on Google and I just haven't been able to find what I'm looking for. And mm -hmm. uh, part of the great value in having us um, at the university is then we can search all of the university's resources. So the um, information you're looking for might be in an online textbook or like Christine said, in some of the um, uh, business databases or some of those other things that um, the university subscribes to um, at a very <laughs> high cost, um, but we can then search those for you. So yeah, Absolutely. just whether you're just coming in looking for a little bit of information or you need to know everything, whatever you want to do. We are flexible. Okay, so you've already seen it. It's time for poll number three. Um, and this relates to the to the next step. Have you ever requested an article from MyNet? Um, so again, this could come out of uh, a literature search that we did for you, or maybe you know you're talking to to somebody and they're like, "Hey, saw this article. Uh, just came out in you know like the Lancet or whatever, um, and you want it, you want to check it out. So you can request articles from us. Okay." And it looks like uh, yeah, so some people have had the need to access uh, materials, some people needed to, but like they went to the publisher site or something and it was going to cost them big bucks. Some people, some people, eh, not so sure. Some people just haven't had the, haven't had the need so far. Okay, so. Yeah, all of, all of these scenarios exist. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and I just like to say too, um, we're not here to guilt you into using any of these services or saying like, oh my gosh, you need to be reading journal articles or any of these things. We're just here to make sure that you know what the services are because we know sometimes, you know, a year from now, you might be on the internet, all the coronavirus information might be back under its paywalls and you might need some stuff and you might hit those paywalls and then you can go like, oh, Orby and Christine told me. I just message them and then they send me the info, which Christine is gonna tell us, Christine, what happens when we hit that paywall <laughs> or when we realize that we need some full text articles? Yes, the rule is don't buy it. <laughs> Contact us instead. Um, under most circumstances, we can get what you need. Um, there is the odd time if something is super obscure um, or if it's like an entire textbook, we can't can't get hold of something for you. But by and large, we can we can usually uh, find what you need in reasonable turnaround time. It's usually uh, one or two days, I believe. Isn't that right, Orvi? Yes. Yeah. I will also say um, this image here is meant to be a joke. Um, we should all be laughing because obviously this isn't how we uh, share information in today's age. <laughs> so hopefully no. everyone was laughing at that one. Yes. Um, I will also point out, though, that if you have um, an ur urgent patient care uh, request, then um, we can we can try and speed th things up um, both on the lit search end and on the document delivery end if you let us know um, that that's the case. Okay. Yeah, and I think our turnaround time on um, delivering documents on urgent patient care, it's usually under four hours. We can guarantee it within 24 hours, certainly. And for literature searches, a little bit, uh, I mean, we will get you something within your timeline um, so we can get it to you as quickly as we can. Right. So, yeah. Um, and like I said, it could be an article. Um, if there is a chapter uh, from a book these days, we can't uh, we can't really deal with the physical books. Um, the library is closed. Um, we're all working from home, as you can probably tell from the backgrounds in our in our video feeds here. Um, but but we are still available. So um, if there's something that you need, 
let us know. We can email. Uh, in most cases, we can also do we are we st we can still fax, right, Orvid? Yeah, we can fax. Um, and I believe in exceptional circumstances, we could mail, like if it was a an item that yeah, we can yeah. we can still mail. Yep. Yeah. Okay. If somebody need, if you if you to, and if you're just going to print out the articles. Um, at home and you'd rather that we just print them for you and then send them in the mail you can do that for sure okay fair enough um so yeah so so all kinds of options all right so the last thing that i'm going to talk about before i pass things over to orvi is current awareness um and so basically when we talk about current awareness we're just talking about keeping kind of on top of what's going on, right? So if there's a particular uh, topic that uh, is particularly relevant or that you're interested in, um, if there's a journal you really like a lot or you have a particular author you would like to follow, um, we can set up um, automated alerts, right? And and so then when something new that is published that fits either, you know, like that criteria, so it's the topic or, you know, the new issue of the journal comes out or what have you, um, you'll get an, an email alert just letting you know um, that's that's available. And then if you get, again, if you decide that you want to follow up on something, something looks interesting, you can uh, request that you receive the full text from us. So it's kind of a, a nice a nice little passive thing to to keep up to date on topics that are interesting for you. Okay, so I'm going to and ask we do over have here. a whole webinar that we did on how to keep current, and certainly our service is one way. But if you were looking for other strategies to keep current, we've got um, at www.minet.ca, uh, we've got that recording. Okay, uh, on to my um, portion. We're going to talk now about our education and orientation sessions. And on the next slide, um we say yeah we've got uh usually we have um a session each month i think we usually don't do june and december kind of thing but mostly it's um online they've always been online they're always free and our past sessions um usually uh, i mean we i think we're when we put a new one up we take an old one down is kind of how we're operating because there's a pretty big bank there um, and if there's something that you wanted us to come and present to your team, come virtually at this time, um, uh, if you, yeah, if you have an individual request, we're happy to create a session for that. Or if there's a session that you'd like us to offer, we're also, um, in most cases, we can easily create that. So on our next slide, we've got a sample of the kinds of sessions that we do. Googling for good evidence is um, is our all time uh, most popular one, um, but we do all kinds of things, um, particularly most recently we've done some PubMed stuff because it's got a new interface and looks and feels different. Um, so we've got got all the things dealing with information. So watch for our, our communications. The other thing is when you sign up for a library card, we can sign you up for our listserv. And then you'll get notice about um, any upcoming sessions. And we also always post them on our website if you're interested to know what's coming up. So um, I think we've mentioned that uh, Christine and I have access uh, to the university's resources. Unfortunately, you do not, uh, with the exception of up to date, unless you happen to be a student or have an appointment with the university, and then you get access to the full text resources. And we recognize that this is a frustration for um, you know, many people who say like, it's two in the morning, I just wanna look at this article, or I don't know if I want this whole article, I just wanna like glance at it and take a look. Um, but access to these resources does cost a lot of money and we are always advocating to get you that access. Um, it's just a matter of getting the funding from the province or from the um, from Manitoba Health or whoever's gonna, give um, that kind of money. So we are advocating for that. In the meantime, I know there's also a lot of people that say, I'm happy just to find the results and send you the list and then you send me the articles. That's amazing and then I don't have to do it. Uh, so <laughs> there is, there is, you know, we know it's some people's preference and not for others. Okay, so I think now we talk about up to date, the one resource that you do have access to and by golly, it's a great one. Um, 
So on the next slide, we have some details. Oh, okay. No, pay, pay attention, Orvi. We have our uh, second last poll. Have you ever used up to date? And I was trying not to do commentary as the votes were coming in. We're at 50 50. Half say yes, half say no. Now we're having some approaching in the yes, I use it all the time. All right. Oh, 100% have voted. Perfect. Okay. So lots of yeses, lots of yes, I use it all the time. And some no's and some no, I've never heard of it. Awesome. Um, and so what is up to date? It's basically an online textbook that deals with um, clinical decision making. So if you're looking for a definition of like, what is this? Or what am I supposed to do when a patient presents in this way? Or sort of what is like uh, the standard method of care? Up to date is like the number one resource. There are tens of thousands of topics. There's a drug database, there's patient information, there's graphics and medical calculators. It's a really, really um, robust tour or uh, tour um, resource. <laughs> we knew it. And meant. yeah. Um, and so we also recognize that getting information off the internet right now is like trying to drink from a fire hydrant. And up to date is if you're just like, what am I supposed to do with this kind of wound? Or what is the way, like, how do you get, I think this patient has this disease. What are the, how do we get them diagnosed? Or what are the tests? that we need to do for this. Um, all those kinds of really clinical things, up to date is a great place to go. Whereas other places on the internet, they'll give you all kinds of opinions or they'll give you kinds of all kinds of research about, well, if you've done you know, this blood test and that blood test, then you could do this blood test. And you're like, no, I just, that's not what I need at all. I just need like a quick five-step process on what to do. So, on the next slide here, um, this is a sort of a listing of a bunch of the topics that UpToDate covers. Uh, and it doesn't have everything, but it's a really quick search. So you can log in, pop in your topic. If it's there, it's like I say, it's going to give you more than sort of your basic info that um, something like Medline Plus or a patient resource is going to give you. It's going to give you sort of the clinical overview. Um, but if they don't have the topic, they don't have the topic. I know they're not like up to date, for example, is not great um, with, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I was thinking about dermatology, but it wasn't dermatology. Dermatology is the number one um, uh, search topic here in Manitoba as a fun up to date fact. Um, yeah, so there's some, if it's in here, it's gonna be really helpful. If it's not in here, you, send us a message and we will find you um, information from another resource. So how uh, do you access it? Um, very awesomely, we've had access for health professionals in Manitoba since January of 2016. Up to date is very expensive for you to buy on your own. So please don't do that. Uh, use um, access through us instead. We appreciate that it's a little bit of a labor intensive process to uh, log in, but once you're in, it is free and and really great to try. So, um, yeah, and uh, some of the people who have access, they don't have access through MyNet, so it is it is a larger provincial license than just for MyNet. So, if you are ever on site or connected to your um, intranet from from Manitoba Health or from a regional health authority or from Cancer Care. You can just go on your intranet and search away easy, easy, easy. Alternatively, you can get a library card with us and log in through our website. Um, I'll also say we, I mean, we're happy to walk you through this process. We, on the next slide, I think we've got a screenshot here of, yeah, we've got step-by-step -step instructions on our website that are really helpful. We can walk you through them. And we also have a webinar that's dedicated um, just to up to date and the kinds of information in it. So on our website, you can click on the up to date in the top toolbar there. It's got our step by step instructions and it's got some information about um, just how to get started. 
So um, yeah, we always encourage everybody to check out up to date. And um, yeah, we're about to head into our closing session. First, though, it's a pop quiz. We know that this is a weird acronym and that it's hard to pronounce. Um, so our final poll is, how do you pronounce the name of our service? And those early votes are coming in with 100% correct answers. Everyone's been paying wow. such attention. Everyone's been paying such good attention. Amazing. We hope that was kind of a fun way to end the session. Um, we pronounce it MyNet and like MyNet, you know, cast a net looking for information, um, however you call it, or if you just refer to us as uh, Christine and Orvi, we're happy with that. <laughs> those ladies at the library or whatever you want to call us. We just want to make sure you know about the services um, and resources that are available to you here. So Christine, I think that was the last slide. Yeah, if you've got yeah. questions, feel free to contact us. Um, uh, we'll note, like Christine said, some of the services because of um, uh, coronavirus, uh, we are not sending out print books right now, but we can get some um, copies from chapters, and we're only able to uh, check our fax machine a couple of times a week, but we're still getting faxes. So otherwise, um, things have been pretty, uh, pretty seamless from our part. If anybody has any questions, please let us know. We do have and one. Yeah, what does this one say? So there's a question uh, about problems accessing using the library card. I assume that this is talking about accessing up to date. Um, is that right? And you know what, maybe um, in a few minutes we could unmute you and we can just kind of, uh, uh, or, I mean, we could just unmute you now if you wanted to. Oh, I think you might be stuck with it. Yeah, we're happy to troubleshoot um, that for you. You can just stay on at the end of the session if you want or give us a call. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll stay on for any um, other questions. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Yeah, and stay tuned. We've got, um, we're just about to announce the sessions for our fall uh, sessions. And really awesome. Um, partly because we're not teaching two of them. Uh, so <laughs> we're gonna learn some stuff too, and that's gonna be really great. So thank you so much for coming. Okay, so I seeing, oh, here we go. I'm going to stop.